Hello, this is Carrie again, and I have another video for you today. Today I have the uh, Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Pencils. Um, I purchased this set of 24 on Amazon, and I wanted to go over them with you because a few people asked me to review these. There is a subscribe link down below. There are all sorts of links to previous videos that I've done in the past. So let's get started. These are the Lyra Polycolor pencils that are made in Germany. There's another brand called Coronor that also makes a pencil that is also called Polycolor. So that's a little bit confusing, but these are the Lyra brands that are, my box at least is made in Germany. But from the back of the box, it looks like they may be either have other products or the same product made in other locations. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, anyway, these are relatively affordable. They are oil-based pencils. They come in sets of 12, 24, 36, and 72. So the maximum number of color is 72. They are sold in open stock. Um, this The set of 12 is $17. The set of 24 is $33. The set of 36 is $54 at Dick Blick. And the set of 72 was 109 at Dick Blick, and those are discountable prices. So if you have a Dick Blick coupon, they would work on those. All right, so these are the, the colors that came in my set. Hold on, let me put this back. Hold on. These are the colors that came in my set. Um, let me tell you some of the positives. One of the main positives that I found is that they work up pretty quickly. Let me show you. Let me get a pencil here and show you that it does deposit a lot of color very quickly. So this is a sort of medium pressure. Um, so you can see how much color it drops off really quickly. And this paper that I am using is 200 um, series Strathmore watercolor paper. Um, but this is, you know, it's just similar to like a, a heavy, like an extra heavy cardstock kind of thing. Um, but you can see that it does very quickly lay down a lot of color. Um, and you can also, you know, it's strong enough that you can press down really hard if that's what you're into. I feel like these pencils might be best for people who like to, you know, just go in with a, a few layers and just, you know, put down a whole lot of color really quickly. Um, so these pencils are really, really good for that. All right, so that's one of the positives of these pencils. Um, another positive that I found is that they the names and the the name and the color number is printed on here and they are sold open stock too. So if you want to buy replacements, you totally can. So um, all the pencils have the name and the color printed on them, um, which I know a lot of people, including me, find really helpful. I, I find it easier to remember what colors I was using um, if I can look at the name. Uh, so there's that. Um, they claim to be light fast. They have some light fast ratings here. Um, hold on. It's going to be hard for me to show you. Hold on. Let me show you. They have some light fast ratings here. I hope you can see these light fast ratings here. Um, I'm not sure what they mean or who does the testing. More importantly, this might just be like based on their own tests. All of these colors are rated as um, extremely light fast based on, I guess their own tests. So there is that. So those are some of the pros on these pencils. Let me show you some of the work that I've done with them. This is an apple that I did. So this was, um, oh, and I wanted to show you how I found, um, a lot of people said that they blend really easily. I did not find that to be the case, but I also didn't have the Lyra brand branded pet, ah, the Lyra branded pencil blender. Um, I use the, I think this was done with a Derwent blender. And um, you can see that it doesn't really, like, I don't know. I, I don't really feel like it got it that blended. Um, I also found that it was hard because it was, because they put down so much color, it was a little bit difficult to keep a strong enough point move this out the way to show you but it, you can see that I had this sharpened before I started using and you can already see that the point is going down pretty fast um, that because it lays down so much color I had a hard time keeping a, a 
good enough point long enough to get into the tooth of the paper. Um, and I found this to be true across multiple paper types. So this is, this isn't done. Um, this is almost done. I have to do the skin, um, which I didn't do with these pencils and I will go over why I didn't do the skin of these pencils in, in a minute. But, um, but I wanted to show you that I found for me, I like to work in a lot of layers. You know, I like to do that when I'm doing watercolor. I like to do that when I'm doing colored pencils. I like to do that when I'm doing oil pastels and I just like to work in layers. It makes it a lot easier for me to, um, make mistakes and to just go over my mistakes. Uh, but I found that these were not that conducive for me to doing a lot of layers because I found that I couldn't, you can see very clearly where the, the yellow was used in the, in the previous layer. And I found that it didn't give me that smooth in terms of how I want my layers to look once I've gone over them. And let me show you this. This was done um, pretty much the same way with the polychromos. And you can see that it's a little bit harder to see the underneath layers. The underneath layers sort of blend in and they don't really stand out the way they do on here. So I don't know, maybe that means that if you're going to use these, you have to be a little bit more careful with your layers. Uh, maybe that's what it means. And I found that to be true here as well. Although because this was, you know, blended in and um, basically burnished, but you can kind of see where some of the previous layers were. Um, and I, I don't know that that's just me. Um, and you might not find that to be the case. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Um, I wasn't expecting it, so I'm not sure if I love that or if I have a problem with it, but that's just a thing that happened. Um, so there is that. That's one of the, that's one of the issues of concern. Um, like I said, people have said that the, the best way to blend them is with the Lyra blender pencil, but that wasn't included. So, um, so because of the heavy deposits of color, as I said, um, it was hard for me to get as many layers as I would have liked. Um, so for example, like I really wanted to do some more darker colors here, but I found that it doesn't really stick after a certain amount of layers. Like it doesn't really, you know, I don't know if that makes any sense. Like after a few layers, I feel like after three or four layers, it doesn't want to take any more. Um, and that might be fixed if you use odorless mineral spirits or if you use their blender pencil, but I found that it it didn't really want to take any more layers and I really wanted to do more layers on this. Um, but I had to sort of give it up. I couldn't get the darks as dark as I wanted to. Um, because like, like I said, i like to lay down a very light shade of the dark and then just keep going over and over again to make it, you know, progressively darker. And I just could not get the darks as dark as I wanted on this. Um, which is, it is what it is, but you know, um, it's not necessarily bad. Like for example, here, when I was sort of, expecting that by the time I did this section I was expecting that so I ended up using the black for the darks which is if you've seen my previous videos I I'm not a fan of using black but since I was expecting it and since I was planning on using black I found that it worked okay so that's something to keep in mind the other thing and I'm going to show you this with the colors that are included is I found the range I have other sets of 24 and I found this range to, and it might be different if you get like all 72, but for this set of 24, I found the yellows to be very similar, the oranges to be very similar, the reds to be um, extremely similar on the reds. The blues, I did, I found the blues to be a little bit different from each other. The greens were okay, um, although there's not a really dark earthy green. Um, I like a dark earthy green. Um, there was not a really dark earthy green. There's no purple. To me, if you have a set of 24, you have to include a purple. A lot of people said you can blend blue and yellow. I don't want to hear it. I want to see a purple. I know I'm a bad man, but I want to see a purple. Um, so there was no purple. So that's always a, that's always a minus. So you see, there's two oranges, but no purple. I'm not saying that that's a problem, but I'm just saying that like, I mean, I'm just saying like, Anyway, so the, so I'm over my purple issues. I've moved on. I swear I'm over it. Um, the browns. So that's part of 
the reason why I struggled to, why I decided not to do the skin tone with these pencils. You can see the skin tone that I did with, um, this is sort of a light, sort of a light brown. Um, this is the skin tone that I did not finished with the polychromos. And you can see that this is the kind of color that I'm going for. Um, and then here, uh, there's not really, so in order for me to do the skin tones the way that I would want to do them, I would need to get a red that was like this kind of color, but a little bit darker. And I would need to get a more, um, caramel brown, like a brown that's a mix between these two. And especially since you can't do a lot of layers, I just wasn't comfortable to be able to get the, the right skin tone that I wanted with these colors. Um, however, if you're going to do lighter skin tones, then it's a lot easier to do with your Pompeian red, um, and you know, like a light layer of your Pompeian red or something like that. But for the darker skin tones, I was not, I don't know. I wasn't able to, I, you know, I can try it here, but I just was not able to, to get it to be a way that was satisfactory for me. So I decided not to do it on the book itself. So there was, so that was that for me. Um, you might not have this problem depending on what skin tones you want to do. So there is that. There also was not a, um, and this is not necessarily, um, this is just the, the, the matter of the size of the set that it is because this is only 24 colors. Um, there's not a really super dark blue, which I like to use for shadows. Um, I usually, um, you know, a usually like a dark indigo or, um, a indotrine. Um, so those are the, those are the colors that I like to use for shadows. Uh, one last thing I want to show you before I bore you, I'm going to take a break because there's one last thing I want right. to show you. So last thing I want to show you is that these pencils are interesting in that the core is a four, um, a four millimeter core. Let me move this out so you can see. The core is a four millimeter core, but the actual pencil is not as, the actual wood casing is not as big around as it is for something like the polychromos. So you can see, I hope you can see that it is actually a smaller outside pencil. The wood section is actually smaller than the polychromos. I hope you can see that from all these various angles that the wood section is actually smaller than the polychromos, but the core is around about the same size, maybe even a little bit bigger. Cause I think the core for the polychromos is 3.8 millimeters. Um, and the core for this is four. So, so you can see that there's actually less wood, which initially worried me in terms of protecting the inside pencil, but I have not had any problems with breakages so far, even though because they use up a lot of color, um, I do find that I have to sharpen them more often than I do other brands. Um, so if you're used to, especially these, I find to be a very good replacement for the Prismacolor. Um, even though they do, I think they do cost now a little bit more than the Prismacolor since the prices have been going down so much for the Prismacolor. I think now they do cost a little bit more than the Prismacolors. Um, because much like the Prismacolors, these are, you know, these lay down a lot of color very quickly. They have a similarly soft texture. So you can see that these are soft and they are also around about the same size around, even though the Lyra has a bigger core. So these lay down a similarly, you know, like you can see that they both lay down a lot of color. The main difference between these and the Prismacolor is that the Prismacolor is wax based. This is oil based. Um, these, uh, come in more colors altogether. The Prismacolor, I believe has 150 colors in set and these have just 75 two colors, I believe. And the colors for this are more similar to each other than they are in the Prismacolor. However, if you like the Prismacolors and you want something with slightly better quality control, that's not going to break on you because these haven't broken on me so far. And I know you're like, well, you haven't even used them. How do you, by the time I had gotten this far into my Prismacolors, I was already dealing with breakages. So already I'm much more impressed. Um, 
so there is that. So um, these might be a good replacement for your Prisma colors, is what we learned today. Um, so, so I think I we've covered just about everything. Um, if you like this video, like this video, <laughs> um, share it with you know your friends, your family, especially if you're on Pinterest. I definitely want to be on Pinterest more. So please feel free to share this video on Pinterest. Um, let me know what is your favorite color and what color you feel like. I realize it's two different questions, but what color do you guys feel like in a set of 24, there should always be one of X? What color do you feel like? For me, in a set of 24, there should always be at least one purple. If you're gonna have 24 colors, you need to have one purple. That's my feelings, that's how I feel about it. Um, let me know down in the comments what you guys think on that. Um, and I will see you guys next time, and I hope you like this video, bye. Yeah. Why are you watching me, Stewie? Stewie. <laughs> Why are you watching me like that?